Hey everybody, it's Brian for GumballTech.com, and in this video I'm going to show you all of the jailbroken mods that I have installed onto my iPhone 4. Now my iPhone 4 is running 4.0.1, that's what it came with when I bought it, and the SHSH blobs are backed up on Cydia, so if I were ever to accident accidentally upgrade to a newer firmware that isn't jailbreakable, I can easily downgrade back to 4.0.1 and carry on from there. So first I'm going to start from the... Uh, start on my lock screen. Now this stuff here, this is called lock info. It lets you view a bunch of different information at a glance on your lock screen, such as mail, um, missed calls, any text messages. You could view your Twitter feed and you could actually compose right on your lock screen right there. And then I have unread email in here, but I'm not going to actually show it to you guys because it's sort of private, but once you tap on an unread email, you could actually delete it or mark it as viewed right from your lock screen. Then you could also refresh your lock or you could refresh your mail or your Twitter timeline or the weather if you like. This it, this here is actually the HTC weather widget available for lock info. You could view your week's weather and things like that. And this is the tap to unlock for iPhone 4. Um, the tap to unlock has been around for ages and this one has been updated to take use of the iPhone 4's display. So tapping on it, we will go to my home screen. Now on the status bar, you can see that I have a custom AT&T logo. This, is, this has also been around for a long time, but it's recently been updated for the iPhone 4's display, which is free. Um, lock info is actually five bucks, I think, but it's well worth it. And then as you can see here, there's a little icon of an envelope. That means I have unread mail. I have something called status notifier installed, which puts little status bar icons in there. Whenever I have something that is unread or missed, such as phone calls or text messages, you'll see a little icon up there. Um, now sliding on the top of the status bar, I have SB settings. Now this is just a little panel of different settings that you can turn on or off, such as 3G, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Flash, if you have that installed, I'll get to that in a minute. You can also adjust your brightness right there and things like that. You could uh, you could add applications to this little dock that you could have show up. You could respring directly from SB settings. You could view some information down here. You could also adjust your power options like going into safe mode which pretty much disables or temporarily disables all your jailbroken stuff. Um, you could lock directly from that button there. SB settings is cool. It's free. It's completely free. There's a bunch of different themes you could have installed. I actually have the um, what is this one called? This is the Mac OS X SB Settings HD theme. It comes with four default ones. They're pretty good. And SB Settings also lets you do a bunch of different things like turning on numeric GSM, things like that. Just a bunch of different little stuff. Um, back to Flash. Um, you could actually run f uh, Flash on your iPhone or iPod Touch or iPad. Um, it's actually called Frash. F-R-A-S-H and basically it lets you view flash content on your iPhone 4. Um, I can't really think of a... oh wait I'll go to the the about flash player page and I'll show you to you guys real quick and there's a nice SB settings toggle for it so you can turn it on or off whenever you'd like So whenever there's flash content on a web page that you go to, you'll see this box here. It'll be gray, and it will say flash. To actually turn it on, you just have to tap on it. Well, getting some... Okay, cannot connect. I've been having this problem lately. Um, I think I actually messed something up, but I'm going to go and fix that after I do this video. But believe me, flash on the iPhone 4 is pretty good. Once you tap on the flash box, it will take a couple seconds to load the flash content and it will play it almost perfectly so in audio supports included as well and so is tapping so it's actually pretty good on the iPhone 4 um, I was hoping it was gonna work but I have to fix that really quick um, if you try flash on your iPhone you shouldn't run into that problem um, let me go into my settings really quick and show you guys what I have in there now this stuff here is the settings for various jailbroken applications. Activator lets you 
run different jailbroken stuff using various gestures or button presses. Um, clock hide lock or it hides the default clock on the lock screen. Display out actually lets you mirror what you see on your screen onto a TV or something using a component or a composite out video cable. It's pretty cool and it works very very well. I'm gonna do a video on that soon. And then I also have display recorder, let's, which lets you dis, re, which lets you record what you have on your display. That also works pretty well. Audio isn't supported yet, which is a big letdown, but I'll do a video on that. I actually have a little 17-second demo video on the channel somewhere. Now, Infinite Folders lets you add an unlimited number of apps to your folders. So in my games, as you can see, I have 12 icons, but I can simply scroll up or down like so. Then you could add an unlimited number of apps to your folders instead of just dealing with the 12 icon limit. Um, I think that one's four bucks in Cydia and if you don't know what Cydia is that's pretty much the jailbroken app store. Ninety percent of the stuff in there is free and pretty good but some of the good stuff you have to pay for a couple bucks or something like that. And then here is all of the settings for the lock info which I showed you earlier. Here's all the different plugins and widgets lots of different things to play around with and winterboard is what you use to basically theme like your icons and add video wallpapers and things like that I actually have that disabled because I don't plan on using it I only installed it because it was required by the status bar stuff don't know why but it's there I have it disabled so I'm not really losing anything performance wise now going into my jailbreak folder um, I have an app called byte sms it's pretty much an SMS replacement. Well, it doesn't actually replace the default messages app, but it makes it so that you can do extra things like add signatures, add templates, it has smileys. Um, you can also reply to a text message no matter where you're at. So let's say I'm in a game and I get a text message, you could tap on the reply button and up will come a keyboard and you can reply to that text message. Byte SMS does a lot of other things too. Um, you actually have to pay for this one. Don't remember how much it costs. And then this is Display Recorder, which is the app you have to use to actually record the display on your phone. Um, I'll do a video on that eventually. Um, this app here is called iFile, which lets you view your file system um, of your device. Uh, let me go here real quick. It just lets you browse through the file system on your device. You could view any folder. You could open any file you want. You could even start a web server, which lets you transfer files back and forth between your computer and your iPhone. And what else? We have Installus, which basically lets you install cracked applications. Now, this isn't exactly legal, um, pretty much depending on how you use it, I guess. Its original goal was to try apps before you have to purchase them, and that's what this does. You can get pretty much any app you want in the App Store for free. Um, most people abuse this and they just keep the apps forever, which is not good. So, Then here I have an app called My3G. This lets you use your 3G connection for pretty much anything you want, such as FaceTime, which I'll get to in a later video. My Y 4.0 lets you turn your iPhone into a router. You can connect multiple devices to your phone and use the internet connection from there. Here I have a Nintendo 64 emulator for the iPhone 4. It works sort of well. You could use your Wiimote with it too. Um, it's not too good performance wise, but it's not too bad. Um, I also have a PlayStation 1 emulator. That one does alright as well. Um, you could also use the Wiimote there. I'll do a video on that too. Now something I forgot to show you guys is called QTweeter. Um, you just drag down on the status bar and it lets you post a, an unlimited number of Facebook or an, and or Twitter accounts at the same exact time. It does a bunch of other things. You could add whatever song you're listening to, um, me get rid of all of that. It also lets you add photos, videos, your location. It just does a bunch of different things and you can do it from anywhere you have access to the status bar. You can also use Activator to enable QTweeter as well. Speaking of Activator, I have something called Spring Flash installed. Using Activator you could set different um, different 
button combinations so that you could turn on the LED flash no matter where you're at. I have my down and then up arrows set to turn the flash on as you can see there and you could be in any application and do this. So I'm going to do the same thing again to turn it off down up a couple seconds later it turns off. Spring flash is free and it's pretty good. I used it a lot on my trip to California to turn the flashlight on whenever I was in dark places. Um, this app here gives you settings for Q Tweeter, such as um, syncing up your Facebook and Twitter accounts. Now, Reminder is an app that lets you customize your status bar icons, various notification settings and things like that. SysInfo Plus lets you view a bunch of different information on your device, such as um, the amount of memory it has, the model numbers, um, all the running processes in the background, memory information, disk information, and also network info. Terminal lets you run commands. Um, think of it as terminal for Linux or OS X or command prompt in Windows. Just lets you run various commands. Right now I'm going to do kill all terminal. Just like that. Now I'm not using, or the wallpaper I'm using I found on the internet. There's, I'm going to put up a post on gumballtech.com that has this wallpaper as well as the lock screen wallpaper that I'm using. They're both really cool. I like the bookshelf stuff. So that is pretty much all of the jailbroken stuff I have on my iPhone 4. It's a lot more stuff than I've ever had on my iPhone 3G or 2G. Partly because of the extra memory and the CPU and all that stuff that makes it hell of a lot faster and perform better with multiple stuff. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below or you can send me a message. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.